What's up, guys? Today's podcast is brought to you by Audible. Get a free audiobook download and a 30-day free trial at audibletrial.com forward slash eggs show. Audible has more than 180,000 titles to choose from for your iPhone, Android, Kindle, just about any device you can imagine. As eggs listeners, you can download a free audiobook today by visiting audibletrial.com forward slash eggs show. One more time. That's audibletrial.com forward slash egg show for your free audio book. Check them out. Hey, everybody. It's eggs. I'm Ryan here with our boy, Mike, and our special guest, Matt Silverman. Matt is a digital marketer and strategist based in Elmwood Park, New Jersey. Further, he's a content creator for the future, home of our dear friends and egg show alumni, Chris Doe, Ben Burns, and Matthew Encina, having crafted the course Blogging for Creative Entrepreneurs. By way of his relationship with Ben at the future, Matt and I connected on LinkedIn, and at long last, we were able to get him on the show. So please join me in welcoming our guest, Matt Silderman of Silderman Solutions. Hey, Matt. How's it going? Hey, guys. Thanks for having me on the show. Of yeah. course. Thanks for so coming So for people who aren't aware, uh, so Matt and I have actually been working on this for a little while, um, just with summer holidays and summer travel and all that stuff, it's yep. taken a little bit of time to, to coordinate. So we're actually really grateful to have you on and, and have finally found a window where we can talk. Yeah. Thanks guys. Like you said, it, it took a little while, but it's worth the wait, right? Yeah. Well, we hope so. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know. I can never vouch for me and Mike. So, uh, anyway, well, let's just get right into it then. So could tell us a little bit about yourself and, uh, give us some background on, on who you are, where you're from and what you do. So, uh, as you know, my name is Matt Silderman. I uh, am the owner of Silderman Solutions, and we specialize in digital marketing. We're based in Elmwood Park, New Jersey. I uh, hope I'm not repeating too many things, but uh, <laughs> but um, I guess you could say we focus more on inbound marketing. Um, our specialties are search engine optimization, copywriting, web design, that sort of thing, and find ourselves moving more out of social uh, media and, and doing a little bit less advertising these days. But um, yeah, that's so anything really inbound uh, is uh, is where our heart lies and any way we can help our clients too. But but uh, I guess what, okay. what do you mind yeah. taking a second and just explaining inbound marketing? I think that's, you know, kind of an inside term uh, okay. that you and me are comfortable with, but maybe some of our listeners don't know. Good point. Like me. I'm, I'm one of those guys that don't know. <laughs> so I would I would sum up inbound marketing as um Anything that you can do to get visitors to your website and convert them to customers or okay. possibly even uh, get them to your website and then bring them to your store front or, you know, local business. Cool. Yeah, no, I think that's really helpful. I think I, I, I'm guilty of this, but I, I often speak in sort of ad lingo or design sure. speak and uh, and leave people in the dark. So trying to oh, that makes uh, sense. trying to be better about that. Um, so how long have you been in business? So I've been, I did freelancing for a number of years. Uh, and then about two and a half years ago, I, uh, formed an LLC and, and made it official. And what was the, uh, sort of the nudge that it took to w go into business? Were you working in house someplace and then you, you decided to step out or if you're anything like me, it comes, you know, by being forced or, or laid off from a company and having to go into business. No, you know, my story is significantly different than that. Um, and so I guess I'll just kind of back up and 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 uh, spill the beans, give you a little bit more of my background, if that's all right. Yeah, that'd be sure. great. Um, so I am actually a full-time English teacher here in New Jersey. Nice. Um, and uh, I guess basically during the financial crisis, when they started uh, riffing teachers, and, and riff is short for reduction in forces. Um, and I have to say, just backing up, I appreciate you explaining the terms because um, as a teacher, I do that pretty frequently. And, uh, you know, so anyway, I appreciate you stepping in and, and I totally understand that perspective. Um, so yeah, I've been teaching for 14 years, uh, 13 and 14 year old. So that's eighth grade. I teach, uh, English language arts. Oh, wow. My wife teaches, uh, eighth grade English also. So oh, it's yes. kind of interesting. Uh, usually when somebody <laughs> says it, that, uh, or I tell somebody I'm a middle school teacher, they, they say, oh, dear God, you know, and God bless you and all of those things. Oh, that, yeah, you know, yeah they, she gets all that same stuff. They, so, uh, yeah, she teaches so, eighth, eighth grade and eighth grade honors English. Yeah, they, they are, they're crazy, but they're my kind of crazy. And so it works out. But um, so 
you know, I've been doing that for 14 years, but during the financial crisis of 2008 and 2009, you know, they were, um, riffing some teachers and, and, uh, you know, the world, like it was looked like it was coming to an end. And I, I began to think, well, what else could I do? What other marketable skills do I have? Um, I'm a big fan of investing and investing. You learn that you diversify your, uh, resources and, and that that's a great asset to you. And so I said to myself, well, what if teaching doesn't work out? You know, we were looking at, uh, how many different municipalities and states possibly defaulting on loans. And even today we have states that are going to have trouble paying their pensions. And, um, so I just began to think, well, what am I going to do? And I've always loved writing, uh, very passionate about it. And so I said, well, let me see what I can do with my writing ability. And, you know, if you don't, use something, you lose it. So I was very excited to uh, jump in and I, I combined my uh, understanding of writing with my understanding of investing. And I started writing for uh, Seeking Alpha, which um, at least a while ago, they build themselves as the top uh, crowdsourced investing platform. Uh, and so I started writing for them and don't laugh, but <laughs> I got paid uh, one cent per page view. Yeah, oh, I was wow. actually going to ask you about that. That's pretty, it, it seems like a really low number, but I guess, I mean, if you get, I think one of your pages, you said you got like 30,000 clicks. Yes. So a times a month, that's, that adds up. Yeah. It, you know what it, it, um, back when I started, they did not, um, they didn't guarantee minimums for authors. Now I think they guarantee at least $35. But when I first started, the average article was, getting about 500 page views, right? So $50 an article. Um, and I think back then too, I was, I was so nervous that, you know, I'm going to publish this with my name on it and it's going to live on the internet forever. And I would spend way too long writing up these long form articles and trying to anticipate every single response that the trolls what could is, have. What someone's going to say. And, and yes. yeah, I do yeah. that to myself all the time. And I've, I've since then kind of gotten over that paralysis, but I really, I tried to think of every counter argument, everything that a troll would say and how, how I could just answer it ahead of time in the, uh, in the post. And, and honestly, I guess that's, um, it's a good way to know your user, right. And good practice for, uh, you know, the marketing that I do today. But, um, so yeah, it took a while, but I started figuring out what to do and I was averaging about hundred dollars a post. And then I got better at it. I, you know, because it was incentivized, I learned social media and I learned a little bit about search engine optimization and how to improve my copywriting. And then, you know, there were a couple of articles where I brought in, you know, close to 30,000 page views. And I had a couple that were close to 20,000 page views. And at that point, I really felt like the only reason I'm getting this much traction is because they're such a big platform. And I don't have anything without them. And I can't go out on my own uh, because everybody kept telling me, you need to go out on your own. You're doing such an amazing job. And I, I don't know, uh, you know, sometimes it takes a while to break through those barriers. I know you have, uh, I've listened to the interview that you guys did with Chris Doe and he's, he's just this amazing coach and it certainly helps a lot of people come over, overcome their, um, their mental blocks. And I just, I guess I didn't think I could do it. I'm not really sure, but, Eventually, I got tired of that. Eventually, I said, you know what, this is just not worth it. But I had learned so much. I said, I can't just sit around. I need to, I, I guess, the way that you could describe me is I always want to be moving forward and I always want progress. And so I said, I need to do something. So I had an opportunity to get in the room with a um, COO of a startup company. And they had no social presence. And so I pitched him and got the job. And uh, it was a bit crazy because I was doing like eight of their social accounts at once uh, and uh, doing so many things for them, crafting their copy and coming up with their full marketing strategy in a lot of ways. And uh, But I was making more money. And so I was happy. The hours were a bit crazy. My quality of life was certainly less, but I was making a lot more money. And eventually, over time, I just started picking up more clients um, and... Um, uh, I guess around that time uh, is when I went into business, you know, made it official 
And um, so, yeah, that's, you know, that's kind of how I got here. Can so. can you um, break down a little bit about C- SEO? Like I, sure, I'm not in the, the design field. Like I don't know anything about it. Like how did you go about learning? Um, well, and I think it, you- that's a good question, Mike, too, because I think the SEO is one of those things that you know gets thrown around a lot. Like it's mm-hmm. a thing that we all need to have. Mm-hmm. It, it was sort of the same thing that happened with social media presence and stuff like that. Like regardless of your messaging or whatever, you just must have this. Okay. And I think SEO kind of became victim of that. So yeah, Matt, since this is sort of your business, if you've got a, a sure. good explanation of what SEO even is, that that might be helpful. Okay. So, so SEO is search engine optimization, right? I used to do correct. Like I knew nothing about it, but I knew it was important. So in my website, like at the bottom of the page, at one point, I changed the font to match the background. Oh, that's a no-no. Words old school yeah. SEO. <laughs> yeah. Yes. yeah, like I, I was, I was like, okay, Google's going to crawl my site, and I'm just going to put, you know, like hot words that would, you know, sure. match. You know, sure. I don't even know if that's the right way, but go ahead and break it down for us because okay. I'm really interested. I will. So. Now, before I before I get too far, and I, I don't want to be that guy, but let me just quickly mention the ebook that you introed before, um, and say that um, the ebook is a, a good way to learn about um, blogging or how to position your company through writing online, uh, through content marketing and blogging, and it goes through the basics of search engine optimization and oh, cool. how it can help you. Um, if you're uh, for inbound marketing purposes. So um, certainly you can check that out. I- I'll, I'll stop plugging now. Uh, now we're going to no, get don't a worry about bit, it, man. Yeah, we'll, we'll get well, a little and, bit uh, more. And we'll circle back around to it too, because I want to hear the story about how that came uh, okay. came to be. Okay, yeah, it's, a, it's an interesting one. So I like to break down search engine optimization into three main areas. You have um, what we call more technical, Uh, search engine optimization or technical SEO, which the easiest thing that I can point to for that is page speed. Okay. If your, say your images are not optimized, let's say that your, um, your host is not using a CDN. um, uh, Sorry, I'm getting really technical. Uh, (laughs) Let me just, (laughs) let let, let me back up and, and put it this way. We all know that we're so impatient on the internet that if if it takes more than three seconds for our page to load, like 60% of us are bouncing to another website, right? I think that that's pretty easy to understand, but that affects your ranking in Google. Google's goals will always be to provide the best answers the quickest, right? To provide the best user experience because Google search is free. They make all their money through the paid ads. And so if they stop becoming the, the best place to find answers, they're not going to make any money. They're going to go out of business. Huh. So that way, does that make sense? Yeah. I, I, I wouldn't have never even thought that page speed would have an effect on, you know, your analytics and your search engine optimization. Yep. So there's technical SEO and, and site health. Uh, so that's probably the easiest thing to point to, let's say, right. Um, and so I won't get too deep into the rest of that, the, the technical aspects, but that would be one that, that is uh, easy to point to for, for that. Um, I guess the other one could be just, uh, you know, sometimes a web designer will, you, you know that you need a new website and a web designer will present you with this amazing new shiny website that you're so excited about. But what they may not do is redirect all your old pages to the new ones. And I encounter this actually pretty frequently. And then your old pages, which had the ability to rank through user signals and through links pointing to them, links from other websites, now just turn out to be 404s or turn out to be broken links that don't go anywhere. And oftentimes web designers don't take that into account, that aspect into account. And so I find myself sometimes coming behind and cleaning up um, the mess left behind uh, a web designer who does not understand site health or SEO or, or that sort of thing. So we set up 301 redirects and, and we help uh, in, in that way. So that's, that's more of the technical. So as I said, we have kind of three main buckets, right? So that's the technical. Um, the other one that I mention is your typical content. Uh, and this is more what people are used to or what people think of as SEO. 
in the sense that you do keyword research, which is, are the words that people are using when they search, the phrases that people are using when they search. And you essentially um, analyze a website's competitors, you assess their ability to rank well in the search results, and you pick key terms or key phrases that they should target based off of how hard those keywords are to rank for. And you, you know there are a set of tools that, uh, that you use to help you with this. And then what you do is you take those terms and there are ways to design your website so that it sends the right signals to Google. Google has given us guidelines for, hey, listen, if you want to do well, these are some guidelines that you have to follow. And so you follow Google's own guidelines for sending the correct signals to Google. And uh, it's basically, it's not like masking keywords in in the same color text at the bottom of the page. That'll definitely get you penalized. But it's more of (laughs) creating themes around keywords that you want to target. Uh, So it would be related search terms, related phrases, so that once again, remember, you want to be the, the... you want to be seen in Google's mind. Even now we're talking about artificial intelligence having a mind, right? But you want to see, you want to be seen in Google's mind as the authority on X topic. Let's say it's design. And so what you your page needs to do is address or create the best possible user experience. And it would do that by, so I don't know, let's say you want to know about, okay, let's say you want to know about search engine optimization. Well, then the page would also address uh, technical SEO like I just did, right? And it would also address keywords and all the topics that I basically just explained to you. It would also address those topics so that if you, if I answered your question and as you were scanning through the page, you saw more things that related to that, you'd say, oh, I'm going to keep reading. This is, this is high quality. And so I anticipate your needs and I answer the questions for you, whether that's through text, whether that's through video or, uh, you know, maybe it's images or, or that sort of thing. Um, and so, uh, but even that is is a separate, um, for instance, I, I think a lot of people know this by now, especially designers, but Google does not, Google cannot see videos, at least not yet. And they cannot see images. And so uh, they understand the images and the videos based on the text that you include and you surround the, the images with or the text that you use to describe the images, like the file name or the alt text, things like that. So anyway, I'm I'm starting to ramble a little bit. But no, no, it's actually really thought. interesting. And I think for, for a lot of people, because, you know, we speak to a lot of entrepreneurs and we talk about a lot of business on this program. And I think that, you know, SEO is one of those things that's become sort of ubiquitous. And, you know, it's just one of those business terms. I just, it's SEO and I need that. Yeah. Uh, I think yeah. having this longer form explanation of it is really helpful. And, you know, and I think it lends to your credibility too. So when we circle around to your, uh, your book again, I think that, uh, you know, it would be clear that there's great information in there. Thank you. And, you know, I, I, I have this kind of chip on my shoulder to go out of my way to explain it because people remember those old hacks, right? Those old cheats to manipulate Google. And they tend to think of us SEOs. I mean, listen, uh, I always say this, but how many emails did you get today or LinkedIn invitations? Did you get today today promising SEO first position on Google, you know, like in all caps, right? I mean, we all do. We, we all get those all the time. And so unfortunately, SEOs tend to be the bottom feeders of the marketing industry or, you know, the used car salesman. Mm-hmm. And I really try to go out of my way to say, listen, we're not trying to trick Google. That does not work for you in the long run. You you want to serve your users, creating the best user experience and understanding how to best uh, have your page interact with Google and their crawler bots is, is the best thing that you can do. And it is a it is a good investment if, if we do it correctly. Well, um, and I think so, that's really good perspective, you know, for some reason. And, and, you know, and I come from like agency and design background, but SEO has become one of those things like the sort of, you know, five years ago, it was the the social media expert and every agency was hiring the 19 year old that knew how to run Twitter and assumed they yes. knew how to do social media. Well, yeah, they knew how to run the platform, but they didn't know how to write content for social media. <laughs> you mm-hmm. know, so like they yes. didn't understand how to use the tool. They just knew how to technically use the tool. And so so I think it's important, this clarification, you know, even though it is a little bit technical or a little bit long form, I think it is important to to share this information. So you were self-taught on how to do most of your SEO stuff. Uh, Do you have any uh, 
books that you would recommend or, or places you could go to learn more? Absolutely. Other than your blogging. Yeah, for other than other than mine, what I would say is um unfortunately he's kind of left, but uh Moz, M O Z is the go-to source for learning about SEO. And um, the founder, Rand Fishkin, I, I love it. They, call, they used to call him the Wizard of Moz. Uh, he uh, unfortunately has uh, left the company, but he started something called Whiteboard Fridays where he would do, uh, in a very articulate way, he would pick a topic and he would do a whiteboard talk uh, and, and you know record it on video and he would teach you and and... He would really, he was sort of the champion for the best things about SEO. And uh, I, I've learned a ton from him. There are certainly others, um, but I would say he is, um, in the same way that Chris Doe is sort of my creativity business guru, um, Rand Fishkin is my guru related to uh, search engine optimization. I actually just purchased his uh, uh, Lost audio and Founder. Called, uh, Lost and Founder. Yes. Uh, it looked like a pretty good one. Is there another one that is better or is that? Uh... No, I, you know, it's not. So that's more about um, his journey from a uh, founder perspective. It's not really about SEO at all. Um, but I have I have yet to purchase that, but I am certainly looking forward to getting into it. Um, and I, I'm also, while we're on that subject, if, if there are any other uh, Rand Fishkin fans, he founded a new company called Spark Toro. And I am... Uh, uh, I'm interested in learning about that. I've been paying a little bit of attention to it. And uh, it, it's, if I explain it too much, I think we're going to get into the weeds too, <laughs> too much with, with uh, what the deal is with that. But, um, but, and we'll get very technical with our SEO explanation, but um, he is someone that I, I have a genuine respect for and I, I uh, learned a lot from him. So uh, yeah, very cool. definitely somebody that I would recommend that, that everybody should check out. Cool. Well, all that uh, sort of said and established or uh, credibility established, let's talk a little bit about the ebook, uh, the content you wrote for the future. Uh, you have alluded to an interesting story about how that came to be. Uh, and once again, before we get into it, it's called Blogging for Creative Entrepreneurs. So uh, sorry to uh, do this to you. I, there are three buckets of SEO. I got to talk about two of them. And oh, let me just well, mention means, the, get that the third last one. one. Sorry about that. Oh, no worries. Um, so the last bucket is local search. Um, and it's pretty cool in the sense that, um, so let's say that, uh, you are searching locally for a, um, so, uh, blind, right. Uh, Chris Doe's company defines himself as a brand consultancy agency, right. Uh, and, or even let's pick the, I don't know, let's talk about the top, uh, logo designer, like uh, sometimes people mention Pentagram, right? Um, if in New Jersey, I were to search for logo designer, even though Pentagram is the best, Google will actually uh, knows that that probably means that I want to work with a local, comp uh, local company, that I want to see them in person, that I want to get to know them, that I'm more likely to to want that based on their understanding of user behavior. And so they will ser they will serve up in the search results local companies that can help me with logo design and branding. Um, and so the third bucket is local search. And local search is important because how often do we all search for a local place to eat or whatever it may be, the, the local, um, I don't know, I'm trying to think what else you might need, right? But a, a local store or a local business that can help solve your problems that you want to visit. And so it's actually a completely not completely different set of ranking factors, but it's a it's a significantly different set of ranking factors and a different algorithm that affects um, local search. And so it's almost an entirely separate discipline of helping these smaller mom and pop shops not rank nationally because that's not what they need, but to rank well in, in local search and form better relationships with their, you know, the customers who are in close proximity to them. Huh. Is that kind of tied into like Google Maps? Um, yeah, absolutely. Putting the pin down and, and actually having your establishment kind of defined where your business is. Yes. Yep. Yeah. To, to be on the map pack, it's based. Uh, one of the most important uh, weightings is proximity to the searcher. 
So if, uh, you know, I'm in Elmwood Park, New Jersey, if somebody is in Elmwood Park, New Jersey, and they're searching for digital marketing, I'm going to pop up in the map pack, um, but not, you know, uh, but that actually doesn't mean then that I would pop up in the organic rankings. It's a, it's, there's just a lot of different things to consider. It's not just the maps. It's also below that in the, in the organic uh, results. Well, so part of SEO then would be sort of figuring out what it is you actually want, right? Do you want national traffic? Do you want regional traffic? I guess you've got to sort of figure out what your strategy is before you really even know what to engage in. It's true. It's not really just a one size fits all solution. Yep. And the competition is different, whether you are measuring it nationally or whether you're measuring it locally. So it it really depends. It it can get quite challenging to know um, what you should be doing and, and, and to analyze that. So, yep. Cool. Well, yeah, no, yeah. Thanks, Matt, for going into all that. I mean, maybe you hadn't uh, planned on getting into a heavy SEO discussion yeah. here, but but I do think that that was super helpful and uh, and actually good information even for me. I mean, I work around ask you know quote unquote SEO experts all the time, okay. but uh, you know as a creative because I'm constantly designing UI UX sure. you know, that kind of sure. stuff. But um, but having that perspective on what SEO actually is, you know, beyond sort of the smoke and mirrors bit, is yep. uh, is really yep. beneficial. Thanks, Matt. Sure. So can you, we've mentioned your, your audio, um, uh, ebook blogging for creative entrepreneurs. Mm-hmm. Uh, can you talk about how you got in touch with the guys at the future and how the book actually came about? Sure. Yeah. It's, it's a pretty interesting discussion. I, um, was following the future for a while, uh, and l- watching videos all the way back when, uh, Chris and Jose Caballero were, um, well back when it was the school and, uh, Jose and Chris were talking and um, they made the transition and Jose transitioned out and, and Ben joined. And a couple months after that, um, you know, sometimes our heroes, we look at them as if they are perfect. And uh, we have, you know, special glasses that we view them through. And I went to the Futures website and I noticed that there were some things that were that could be improved. And through following them religiously, I found out that they were, you know, transitioning from blind to the future and they, you know, uh, only had one full-time employee. And so things were sort of slipping through the cracks. And uh, I started to look at the website and, and look at that with different eyes and realize, okay, well, Chris can't do everything. He's doing two businesses. He's doing so many other things. And Ben is doing all this by himself. And, So there are some things that have fallen through the cracks. Okay. Now how do I, and I'd love to help, but you know, they, they have, uh, they, at that point I had learned so much from them. Uh, how do I, um, get it, their attention. And for the longest time, Chris said, Hey, friend me on Facebook, friend me on Facebook uh, and just don't be a jerk about it. But I didn't believe him because everybody who's important says that, you know, they want you to think that you're actually interacting with the star, you know, on social media and you're not, you know, it's their assistant or whatever else. So, but over time I realized that he was genuinely frustrated when people would friend him. And the first thing they would do is ask, you know, ask a favor, Hey, can you review my portfolio? You should hire me or whatever else. And he would always say, Hey, listen, I'm providing tremendous value for free can you just provide some value back or be a nice guy instead of just always, you know, every time asking, begging, you know, being a jerk in in some cases. And so I said, all right, I, I, uh, I need to try to get his attention. So I friended him and he accepted it. And I said, all right, I got to play the long game here. So I thanked him for what he had done and the things that he taught me. And then I just, you know, he responded and he said that he appreciated that. And then I let it go. And I, a week later, I uh, believe I suggested a show idea Uh, and then we had a little chat and then that was it. A week after that, he won some sort of award. He won a competition and I thanked him for that. All the while in the background, I was doing an audit of their website and their marketing and I was arranging it in a way, you know, Chris always says that his most valuable asset is his time. And so I didn't want to waste it. Right. And so I said, okay, let me get this audit together. Let me get it as sharp as it can be. uh, And I need to get his attention. So how do I do that? So I basically wrote out the full audit and I picked what I felt was the highest value target. And I composed a a short 
couple paragraphs to him and, and sent it over Facebook. And it basically said, listen, I think there are some things that can be improved upon. And here's what I think is, you know, the, the highest ROI target. Um, I have included the rest of my findings in a uh, sort of executive summary uh, audit. And I linked to in a Google doc and I would love to help you guys in any way that I can. Huh. So he said, oh, thank you so much. He said, I'll, I'll send this to Ben. And I wasn't sure at that point what that meant, you know? And so, uh, you know, a week goes by, nothing. Two weeks goes by, nothing. Uh, I think it ended up being like 15, 16 days, something like that. And Ben reached out and said, I'd love to schedule a call. And uh, I was like, wow. I mean, I had given up at that point. You know, I figured they're, they're, it's Chris Doe. He's too big. He's too important. Why would he, you know, why would he want my help? He's got so many, so many better experts and other people to help him. And why would he want my help? So I just couldn't believe that, that, um, you know, that, that I actually got the opportunity. And so Ben and I, Ben's very busy, but we were able to make it work and the call went really well. And we, we started a good relationship and, and, um, I was helping them with their blogging. Um, and I'll I'll kind of uh, fast forward a little bit, but long story short, I ended up recommending, some things to Ben as far as their content calendar and, and reorganizing a little bit how they do things. And so I said, in order to, to do this correctly, why don't I write up a document talking about a sort of a how to guide talking about what the workflow should be like and best practices. Cause here we have a, a writer and a designer. And then I was coming in sort of after the fact and tweaking it for SEO. And I said, if they know going in, SEO best practices, then I can just come in and follow it through, give it a, you know, an editorial eye, tweak it where it needs to be tweaked and I can publish it and we'll be good. So I wrote this document for Ben and, uh, at the end of it, he was so impressed. He said, I'd like to sell this in our store. And I, you know, uh, man, I, I think my jaw hit the floor at that point. I was just so, uh, you know, I, I have How long was the original document. That's a good question. I think it was probably five to seven pages. It wasn't kind of like just a cliff notes pretty much. Yeah. You know, just some of the basics um, and uh, the things that were specifically relevant for them. I mean, you know, the, the, well, let me, let me back up and just say that, that uh, yeah, it, it was, it was what was specifically relevant for that situation. And so he said, I'd like to sell this. And I said, okay, well, I'd like to, if we're really going to do this, I'd really like to add a lot more. Uh, you know, the, the future always provides tremendous value for everything that they offer. And so I basically, uh, you know, as we, as was kind of already noted, I teach and I run the agency. And so I took, that was August, and I took basically till Christmas um, putting it all together. And then I gave him the first draft and we ended up working on it a little bit more. It eventually published last May. So that would be May of 2018. Um, but all told now it is 150 pages, uh, of an ebook and it has 20 plus pages of, uh, putting all the SEO, um, you know, high ideas, put, how do you, how you put all that into practice and how you take steps towards being successful? And I, yeah, I created a worksheet about uh, how to do outreach, right? Because if you are trying to grow your brand and you possibly want to get your blog features elsewhere, or you want to be able to write for other blogs, uh, you're going to need to be able to do outreach. Part of being able to rank now and get, uh, is getting links to your, to your content one of the ways you get links to your content is, is through quality outreach uh, not just, you know, cold emailing and spamming, but really learning about the person that you want to connect with. And uh, so there's a, there's a worksheet in there about how to do that based off of my experiences, you know, doing that sort of thing. So, huh. so it took you four months to write the book when you, you said August to this about Christmas um, how much of that time did you spend like researching and, and trying to, you know, learn more and, and, and do proof of concept and stuff? I'm, I'm sure you had a pretty good background of it, but I mean, going from, okay, 
this is what I, I do for my day job to being an actual like author on the subject. Mm-hmm. I, I'm sure that's a little in, you know, intimidating. Um, did, did you ever like second guess yourself and kind of just, uh, I don't know, I, I, it, putting yourself out there in that kind of position and, and actually writing a book about it. For me, I've, I've tried starting a blog two or three times, but usually I never hit publish it just because it's, it's too, I don't know, almost too personal for me. You know, like I, yeah. I, uh, I guess there's a difference between, you know, like if I were to write a, a blog on DJing, for example, I think I could do a pretty good job, but usually whenever I blog, it's like personal stuff. It's not, you know, business related. And, and I'm not an author. I'm not a, uh, a, a, a wordsmith per se. I, I like to listen to a lot of audio books, but mm-hmm. when it comes to actually like putting my words on paper, I clam up. Um, mm-hmm. is there anything that you do to, to just kind of prep and get ready and, and, you know, research is one of them, but like, uh, what, what's your process on, on writing something like this? Well, uh, that's, uh, I've got a lot to say on the subject. Um, let me just say that one of the things I realized is I've been in marketing forever, as long as I can remember, because, uh, my dad always taught me to consider what other people think, their perception of the situation. And my dad was a big one on yeah, how you dress. People will judge you. You know, I, I, um, I forget who calls it. It's uh, thin slicing in the in the uh, in a fraction of a second they have judged you, right? And so I, from a very young age, I always thought about other people's perceptions. And then I went into teaching, and I never realized it, but teaching is marketing because. Every day I have students come into my room and I need to convince them to buy what I'm selling. I have the keys to a better life for them through education, through, uh, you know, chasing down their dreams, but obviously through hard work as well. But I have to convince them that it's important and I have to be excited about what we're learning. And I, I have to, like I said, get them excited, convince them to buy what I'm selling, hold their attention, keep it interesting. Uh, and guess what? I talk about writing all day, every day. And so, um, I am passionate about writing. So that part, uh, you know, was that part wasn't too hard. Some of what I struggled with was with SEO. Sometimes you have to choose your words very carefully because you could point somebody in the wrong direction or they could say, Oh, he, he's totally got his information wrong and, and you would lose your authority, so to speak. Right. Mm-hmm. So yeah, for the SEO, I sort of did check and recheck. Um, what I can say, what was exciting about working with Ben, and I, I really value the experience, is most of my life uh, I've worked with people who are like, it's not wrong, fix it, you know, or, or more punitive or more negative. And Ben, and I, I'm starting to realize that this is how the future operates, but Ben asked me some really amazing questions and pulled out insights about writing that I had forgotten were there. Just just based off of the questions he asked and I like example, one, one question he would have try, I'm trying to think, honestly, I, I can't, it was just, he, he rarely told me what to do, but instead he often asked questions and I just, I never, some of the stuff I had forgotten that I had it inside me. And, uh, honestly, I'm, I'm sorry. I can't remember the specific questions. It was just, yeah. It was well, just a, and I think I think that's a technique that like Christo uses too. I noticed that in our conversation with him that you know he sort of digs into what you're doing, you know, it, by asking questions rather than pointing mm-hmm. out a specific detail or just saying, "Oh, this is that way." He yeah. will ask you why you chose to do it that way, or or you know, sort of meander through the conversation to more deeply understand what you did. Uh, Matt and Cena actually kind of did the same thing before we sat down with Chris because we went down to L.A. to to actually interview Chris in person. And before we met up with Chris, Matt showed up and he was full on, you know, playing 20 questions with us. Like, what do you want to talk about? Da, 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 and trying to get, you know, our brains kind of going from, to be ready for the conversation. Mm-hmm. It, it was really a really yeah, it's cool an interesting story. process. And, and I, I can see that Chris has sort of you know, put that on his guys too. You know, they've sort of learned that characteristic from him. And, and back to your earlier point about just his ability as a coach, um, 
you know, he's, he's really great about that stuff. And, uh, I mean, in our conversation with him and recently he's been publishing some videos of our conversation. Mm. Um, he, uh, I, I mean, he took the best chunks of our conversation and the parts that even just when I heard it the first time, I knew the, that those were the most effective bits and they're exactly going through this process, you know, that, you, that we're describing now where he's asking questions and he's trying to make, you know, kind of put you on the spot and make you answer questions critically instead of just, I don't know, shooting with stuff off the cuff. And if you give him an answer that is sort of, I don't know, half-assed or made up or whatever, he circles back around and he, you know, asks you, oh, well, why would you do that? Yeah. <laughs> you know, and, uh, and he really, really demands a, a lot of you. It's a great process. It, it really is a learned skill, too, because something that, that I have learned from him that I think is very powerful is he will often say that you show your expertise by the questions you ask. And um, early in my career, I went into meetings and I talked over the potential clients to show them how smart I was, to show them what I knew, to try to establish that I was an expert. Uh, but why would they want to hire me then if I'm going to do that, right? Right. And so the other thing that I think is pretty powerful is what I've noticed is some people don't like when you ask them questions. They are uncomfortable about digging into their business because maybe they don't know the numbers or maybe they're just uncomfortable with deep penetrating questions, but he's so good at sort of disarming that uh, I got to get better at that myself. But I, I do agree with what he says that you show your expertise by the questions that you ask and you establish yourself, not just as a, you know, a writer or a designer or a marketer, but as a fellow business owner who understands the struggles of a business owner and, um, it's, it's something that I certainly want to work on. And, and I certainly got an amazing taste of it when working with them. So, yeah, yeah I that, agree. I've, I've not met anyone better at it than him. And, you know, I, I have also tried to sort of be better about that. I, I've been in many a pitch meeting where uh, I did exactly as you described, where you sort of go in and show off your expertise. Look how smart I am. And uh, I, I guess part of what you have to realize is that this business is their baby. And they're the mm -hmm. one that's proud of yep. it. And they're the one that's accomplished whatever they've accomplished. They don't necessarily want to hear, you know, that, oh, well, you've been doing it wrong all these years, you know, because I'm smart. Yeah. And I know, <laughs> you know, it's like, <laughs> yes. you know, like it, you would be much better served, you know, meandering through this series of questions and trying to understand the decisions they made or the thought process they made mm -hmm. and uh, and then figure out how to adapt it or how to change it and do it all through uh, through sort of inquiry. Uh, versus this sort of top down, you know, this is what you should do because I know best kind of approach. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. so go ahead. One of the uh, topics that you discuss in your uh, ebook, uh, it, it, you go over the benefits of documenting more than creating. Mm -hmm. And I was wondering if you could just kind of break that down because it, it kind of, it, it, it's like a light bulb moment for me because it's almost like keeping a daily journal, I would assume. And then you can kind of, once you, this is my take on just that one sentence is by documenting, you know, your process, you can go through and pick the parts out and then elaborate on them later. Mm -hmm. Is that kind of, am I reading that right? Yeah, you're, you're absolutely correct. Uh, and I think this is a per perfect question for you to ask because as you said that, and I, I guess maybe I didn't fully answer your question before. In some cases you are, um, and excuse me if I'm incorrectly diagnosing you, but you seem like you're suffering from a uh, desire, you know, a sort of, uh, to be perfect, right? Uh, you're struggling yeah. with the fact that yep. it's not perfect enough to publish. Um, and I struggled with that for a number of years. Like I said, I, I, I was spending way too long on these, uh, these articles and not making any money anyway. Um, but when you let your guard down and when you're able to just say, you know what, I am, I'm learning and come and learn with me. Um, it makes it much more powerful because we have been so over marketed to that. Nobody wants the talking head. Nobody wants that plastic smile. They want to see, I mean, it's reality TV, right? They want to actually, it's more real than reality TV. <laughs> uh, it's, they want to see your struggles. They want to know that you are uh, a real person and they want to see your wins and your losses. And if you are like me, where you, it would take you so long to write a blog post because you would freak out that it had to be perfect and that people were going to judge you based off of it. Um, it can be very freeing to just let that go and to say, you know what, I, here I am. This is me. This is my mess, but 
but I'm learning. And what I've actually found, because I was able to get over that hurdle, is, um, uh, you know, I have some videos on YouTube where I, I talk through the book and through some other things that people appreciate that better than you trying to pretend like you have your act together and that you're perfect. And um, they become more comfortable with you as a person and are more likely to purchase from you because after watching you document your journey, they, you have almost an inside track uh, because they feel like they know you. You know, I remember the first time that I spoke with Ben, I was like, this is so weird because I feel like I know you and we've never talked before. But that's because yeah. I had watched him for hours on the vlogs, right? That the future did. So you have the opportunity to um, market your business, share your struggle, connect with potential customers and uh, not overburden yourself with trying to create perfect content or just getting stuck and never creating anything. And uh, it, it really can open a lot of new doors. And so that's, there are a number so of things. Are you talking about like the process of documenting? Are you saying um, on a daily basis, write down what happened that day and publish it? Or is that a personal thing that you just kind of hold on to and use for reference? Well, there, there are two ways that you can look at it. Number one is, um, Chris often says that you should really keep a journal and keep track of what you're thankful for and what you learned that day and that sort of thing. So that can turn into content if you want it to. The other aspect is more of like the Gary Vaynerchuk version where you have a camera follow you around all day. And that you just pick, seems weird to me. Uh, and, I, I, and listen, I, I, I'm a pretty private person and have only over the last couple of years been okay with sort of sharing uh, more of my thoughts and, and my face online and all of that. But you can, you know, have a camera follow you around all day. And then, and that's the other extreme, right? And, but then you pick out little nuggets of wisdom and turn them into three minute, you know, or even less than that, I don't know, 30 second clips that you run on social media, right? So there are different ways that you can do that. Whatever that, whatever fits you best, whatever fits your schedule best. It's not so much about, you know, trying to create that pers perfect piece of content to market and to be a lead magnet. It's more of just actively showing people what you're doing online. And so, you know, for instance, um, I uh, was just uploaded a video today about a website redesign that I had done. And I shared my thoughts about um, what the original website looked like and what we hope to accomplish with the new website and how we executed on those main points. Right. So, I just letting everybody know what I had done. It, it was uh, very informal. It, you know, I didn't put a lot of pressure on myself to uh, to be perfect or, or anything else. And so uh, sometimes I'm just uh, just recently connected with. I have a new client in San Diego, and I'm helping him with his um, shout out to to John of DigiWorks, helping him with his SEO. And uh, I asked him. I said, "Do you mind if I create some screencasts of?" what we're doing together and talk about the the weaknesses and how I'm helping you fix that. And he said, sure, that's great. Cause it's good exposure for him too. And, um, yeah. once again, it's in a, in a friendly way, I'm demonstrating my expertise and sharing my struggles with people. Um, and it's informative as well. So it's, it's, uh, you know, it, it's working. So that's cool. So does um, that, does that answer your question better than the, it does. I, I actually, you know, I, I've been kind of doing the same thing, but just on a personal level, like I, I, I have a Google Doc that I just kind of put my thoughts down on mm -hmm. a daily basis and just kind of I'll refer to it here and there just to as a reference for me. But I never publish it. I never put anything out whenever it comes to like an actual blog or I like I've said, I've started one twice and both times they just kind of fell off on the wayside. It seems like I. I'd never really kind of understood the benefits of ha having a blog and actually using it to generate business. Mm -hmm. um, and the more that we kind of do this podcast and the more that I get to talk to people like you and Chris and, and Matt and Cena, it, it's like, I just, I'm learning so much and I wish I could have gone back like 10 years ago and applied all these principles from the start. Hey, I hear you. I wish uh, you know, if you had seen the teenage me and asked her, are you going to own a business <laughs> one day? I'd have been like, what are you talking about? You know, I, I absolutely wish I could have started earlier as well. Uh, but, you know, I think the uh, 
the exciting thing is that, and you may not have even realized this. So supposedly when it comes to writing your ideas, you have this uh, block that gets in the way. But when it comes to podcasting, you just talk away and you don't think about it. And how much have you published? You guys have a ton of episodes up there. So yeah, it's weird. Yeah, actually, like this is 70. 71. That's 71 consecutive weeks of recording. So that's, I mean, uh, wow. Pretty, hey, that's a, that's a big accomplishment. Yeah. Uh, but, but think about that for a minute. And maybe one of the things that I actually discuss in the blogging kit, which is the, that's the nickname for it. I apologize. If blogging I'm, for creative entrepreneurs. Blogging for creative entrepreneurs uh, is you may be a writer who speaks or a speaker who writes. And let me parse that uh, for a minute. Maybe you are more comfortable talking. And when you try to write, you totally cramp up and you put all this pressure on yourself. You worry about your grammar. You worry about your spelling because who knows, maybe you went to parochial school when you were younger and the nuns, you know, slapped you on the knuckles or whatever else. Right. But maybe what you need to do is record, you know, just, uh, I don't know, use Google assistant or speech to text and record yourself talking and then, and, and, and that you'll be able to get over your mental blocks that way. And then, slowly turn that into paragraphs and content. Well, and I think one thing to point out too is, so I think a lot of what keeps people uh, from publishing or whatever, and, you know, maybe even early on before this podcast really started, you know, this might've been something that kept us from doing it too, is just sort of fear, right? You're, I mean, Mm -hmm. you're basically putting yourself out on uh, a platform to be judged or, or whatever, you know, you're trying to establish yourself as an expert, but what if somebody smarter than you says you're dumb? You know, like, I mean, there's this fear component. And then I think, you know, and I think Mike sort of touched on it a little bit, but like this was one of the feelings I had when I was in the presence of Christo and we were down there meeting him was that sort of letting go of my pride and all the acting like I know the right answer to everything, although Mm -hmm. I'm very clearly still working my way through stuff, Mm -hmm. like letting down that guard and allowing Chris sort of to, you know, work his magic, but like, talk to me without this pretense that, you know, or this chef puffy or puffy chestness kind of Mm -hmm. thing, you know, where you sort of, you know, bloat yourself up and make yourself seem important. I think that sort of this pride component and this like, um, Oh, what's the word I'm looking for? Sort of narcissism. Mm -hmm. Like I think that there's all these things that sort of play into this, you know, being able to publish, you know, I mean, you can, be nervous about writing a blog or whatever, but I think a lot of people are sort of petrified into inaction before they even get started, you know, for those mm-hmm. kinds of reasons, either they're afraid of being judged or they're afraid of whatever criticism comes. And, and, uh, so I think it's important to talk about that, that bit of, you know, just sort of internal work that needs to be done, you know, overcoming yeah. pride and overcoming these, uh, you know, so stop the, the fake it till you make it mentality and just learn from people, um, it, you know, versus just trying to pretend that you know it all. Well, you know, what's interesting is uh, it takes a while, right? I I am a part of the Futures Pro Group. And so, um, uh, you know, we uh, it's it's a nice uh, opportunity to uh, be, uh, I guess they call it Chris's mastermind group. And he he does weekly coaching calls. And, uh, you know, we we pick topics to learn about and to do video chats on. And it's a great networking opportunity. And so I have been uh, you know, really paying close attention to him for, for a while now. And I guess I have come a long way. You know, one of the things, um, that is kind of interesting is I don't too often talk about the fact that I'm a teacher, you know, you're talking in reference to what you said about letting your guard down. Uh, I, I always worried that people would say, well, you know, you're not, you're not a real entrepreneur. You're not, since you're not doing this full time, you're not, you know, really hardcore, you're not good enough or, or whatever else. And, um, you know, it's been, there's something to be said about, you know, being a full entrepreneur and having, you know, the, the weekly paycheck that is making sure all your bills are paid. There's when you're, when you're on your own and not, you know, knowing when your next, next checks come in and it's, it's kind of stressful. And I've actually been, you know, contemplating on going back and getting an actual day day job just mm-hmm. to have the stability so well and that's i totally get it that's the thing i think you have to because I, I there have been stages where you where i have dealt with this you know in, in 2017 my business grew 500 percent, and and it was starting out small so 500 percent is not completely huge but it was to the point where i started saying 
should I leave teaching? Is this something that I should ride and then I should keep going? And, um, and you know, you have different people in your life who, who want to live vicarious through, vicariously through you and always wanted to say to their bosses, you know, I'm, I'm not taking this, I'm leaving. And so they, you know, are trying, some of them are trying to push me to, Oh, absolutely. You need to quit your day job and do this full time. And, um, you know, and I, and I think, like I said, you, you know, sometimes you hear on the internet, those motivational speakers that are like, yeah, you know, if, uh, who was it? Cortez, when he came to the new world, he burned the ships. And so if you're not going, you know, full steam, then, then you're not really committed. And, and, uh, you know, I, I think throughout this journey, certainly it does take times to to reassess. But I've, as you said, I've figured out myself and what I need uh, and what is best for my family. And in order to be a, it, it's funny, I don't even know if it can be called a real entrepreneur in the sense of like, I have so many levels of safety built into my into my life. Uh, I have the I have the J job, which is a steady salary, and then. I've built it so the insurance and all the other stuff too. Well, yeah. I mean, yeah. Well, and that, that's, that's part of it. But so I have the, the day job that is a steady salary. And then I arranged it so that I have a number of uh, retainer clients and, and it, that that's a, a couple different reasons. As you probably know, we get teachers get these big surges in work when we have to grade a paper, when we have to grade a test. Um, and so having retainer, I know what work is expected of me and I can plan it out. But what it also does for me is it allows me to not be, uh, not lose my mind if I, if I don't win a bid and not lose my mind, uh, and not, you know, not take clients that are, um, not offering a, a high enough budget or who I know will be a headache. Um, and, and trust me, I did that when I first started out and it was not good for my family. It was not, I, I was not the father that I wanted to be. I was not the husband that I wanted to be. And so, you know, it, it it's funny, I guess you just kind of have to know yourself and know, uh, what your needs are and, and how to sort of function your best and, and function most optimally and then do that, you know, to, to the best of your ability. But, um, yeah, it, it's just funny. I realized when I was talking with, a with a friend that I don't know, maybe I'm not a full entrepreneur, but I've got, you know, levels of safety built in so that I can then uh, go out and explore and, and bid on jobs when I have time. And if I don't win them, then that's okay. And, uh, and life goes on, you know, so I don't know, I guess it's different yeah, for each I don't know. person. I, I think the way you're doing it makes the most sense because you don't lose the passion when you, when you're doing it a hundred percent and you're relying on it as an income and you, if you don't, you know, take this client, you're not going to be able to feed your family next week. Uh, it, it kind of makes it where it's just another job. Mm -hmm. But if you are doing it as a, you know, it's something you love to do, but you also get money on for doing it. It, 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 you have the drive. You want to keep doing it. You want to, it, it's fun to you. Mm -hmm. I, I recently just quit my, um, I had a couple venues that I would work at and, uh, it was just becoming a slog. I, 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 I didn't like it. I, every time I'd go to work, I was just in the wrong mindset. And now it's been, you know, a month since I've been, you know, DJing at these venues and now I'm, I'm kind of, I'm itching to get back, mm -hmm. you know, I'm, I'm itching, you know, and so it's kind of, I, I, I've had the day job with the DJing combined and I've had the, the DJing full time. And I tell you what, there's something that just, when you do it for fun and you're doing it to, because you're passionate about it, it's different when you're doing it to feed yourself and it, you have to do it. It, it takes it it's a different mindset. I, I don't know, but that's a good I, point. I get where you're coming from. Yeah. Yeah. So cool. Well, I think uh, we're, uh, we're starting to get down to the end of this thing. Uh, I think Matt mentioned, uh, having sort of a hard out. So is, is there any last things that you'd like to go over Matt, or do you just want to talk a little bit more about the book and where they can get it? 
Yeah, it's available on the Futures website. I don't want to, I feel like I've plugged it too much already. <laughs> well, but, um, you know, honestly, though, like I, I don't have any problem promoting stuff that I think is of value. And I, I mean, you know, Matt and I, you know, we don't know each other outside of this conversation, really. And just from our conversation, I mean, I can already tell that you've taken on a lot of these sort of Christo type techniques when it comes to explaining uh, you know, the way you were breaking down SEO for us and things like that. And I think if that's the kind of information people can find in your uh, course over at the future, I think that it would be wildly important for people to go find that. And I think it would be of real value to them. Um, I have a really good experience with products and things that I've purchased from the future. Um, you know, I, I, they stand behind their products and everything is of good quality. So, uh, so I believe in this book and just from having, you know, had the, the ability to be able to really go deep on some of this stuff with you has been very valuable. So I, uh, I encourage people to go check out the book. Uh, you can check it out over at the future.com. Again, it's called blogging for creative entrepreneurs, uh, written by our, uh, our man, Matt Silderman here. Thank uh, you. That was, that was just, wow. That was very generous. <laughs> I, well, you know, I, I would just, I would just leave with, uh, and, and, you know, obviously Chris has had a big influence on me. What I would say is I always try to provide the, just the most value that I can to people. And so, um, I know that, uh, and we just talked about it being open and, and honest is perfect. I am not, uh, I'm not infallible. I sometimes make mistakes, but if you feel like you are surrounded by, I've had people come to me recently and say, I thought I was doing SEO for clients, but I had no idea that that was actual SEO. So if, if you, after this, or after the discussion, you realize that you thought you knew SEO, but you didn't, you have some questions. Um, like I said, I'm not infallible, but I would love to help you. Um, if you're wondering and you want to learn more about the book, I have a YouTube channel where I talk, uh, I, I sort of break down the sections of the book. I'm in the process of of publishing regularly and, and um, breaking down uh, some of the different sections of the book and talking about uh, the process and, and how I came up with some of those ideas. Um, that might be a good place to get your feet wet. Uh, as I said, my goal is to provide value. So those YouTube uh, videos, hopefully you'll be able to learn something from that. Even if you don't purchase the book, you still should be able to learn a lot. Well, and so. I think that that's a characteristic, you know, that I, I like in the way you're speaking, but also it's something that's very indicative of the future and, and Christo and just, you know, I, I mean, the money will come, but like it, it's really all about doing good for people. And I think that sort of core ethic is, you know, maybe the most important thing you could have, <laughs> you know? So, I mean, it's, yeah. it's yeah. you know, I mean, yeah, you know, if they go by the book, great, you know, I'm sure everybody gets their, you know, beak wet and, and of course it's nice to get paid, but at yeah. the same time, like, I, I mean, and I can just hear it in this discussion, you know, I mean, what you're really trying to do is teach, which is also yeah. what Chris is trying to do. He's really just yeah. trying to teach and, and positively benefit the, uh, the lives of a billion people, I think he said. Yes, so, he uh, <laughs> you know, which is a, a pretty noble goal. Although I do have to say, I, I saw on LinkedIn the other day, he said his goal was to be a billionaire and reach a billion people. And I thought that that was a little bit of a departure from the Chris that I had come to know and love. Huh. I didn't I, see that. I, I thought I, it was just a yeah, billionaire. I, 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 I had never a, actually I, seen I, him I, amount I think the way it was put money worded. on something like that before, mm. but... I, Anyway, I saw that post, too, and I think the way it was worded was kind of confusing and it came across that he was trying to be yeah. a billionaire. And I don't. Well, yeah, and I just thought it was kind of funny because I, I know that he's beating the drum constantly about education. So I thought it was kind of an interesting comment. Mm. But uh, but anyway, yeah, no, we uh, both Mike and I, I mean, you know, need, well, like so I, I come from sort of a traditional creative background. Mike is is creative in his own ways and he and he's been getting more into this. But both he and I are kind of late to the game on Christo. And uh, in this last, you know, six or eight months since he's sort of come into our uh, window, he's, you know, been very influential, I think, to a lot of the things we're doing. And the conversation we had with him was invaluable, too. So I would definitely sure. recommend people go check him out. And, uh, you know, as a disciple, I think the uh, the work you're doing is, is great and uh, of value Thank to you. people as well. So. Good. With that, I guess uh, you can check out uh, Silderman Solutions, uh, and Silderman is C I L D E R M A N Solutions dot com. Uh, you can also find him on Facebook, Silderman uh, Facebook dot com slash Silderman Solutions, and Twitter slash M Silderman. And uh, you know, follow him, uh, follow Matt. Check out all of this content he's talking about. I noticed on his website he's got a uh, live stream with uh, another Egg Show alum. Uh, Melinda Livesey, who we just love. Mm -hmm. 
And, uh, and so there's a, a lot of really great content there to check out and uh, I encourage you to do so. So, and with that, any parting shots or... Uh, no, this was a lot of fun. Part. Thanks, guys. Uh, and I hope... Yeah. Uh, no, really, really appreciate your time. Mike, I hope I can see you uh, starting to publish some things soon, you know? Uh, <laughs> I, I, okay. I'll, I'll, I'll commit to that. Do yeah. We'll do that. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I think there's something there, I, you know, just in the sense of that you, you do such a good job interviewing people. Uh, there's got to be something. There's got to be something there, you know, that you've just talked for the past hour comfortably, you know, or, yeah. or maybe I did all the talking, but <laughs> you still ask good <laughs> questions, right? So, uh, you know, there's got to be something there that, that you can... Uh, I guess it's it's defining what I want to talk about, you know, because I, I have so many different aspects of my life that, you know, the podcast, the, the DJing side of thing, me as a human being, just being a person, mm -hmm. you know, it's like honing in on what my message is, mm -hmm. is the hard part. So okay. I, I, I just need to figure that but out. But see, even that is just just start because once you get started, it, it's it's you just got to break that barrier. You get started and figure out what your message is along the way. Don't even think about ROI. Just think about, hey, I'm gonna start, and it'll based on your audience and and how people respond to certain posts, you'll figure it out. You know, or just based on how you feel when you talk about X, Y, or Z, you'll you'll figure it out. But it, bring other people along for the journey for sure thank you for the inspiration cool. yeah sure. and matt thanks for your time thanks so much for uh for yeah. finally making this happen we're uh, grateful to get you on the air yeah guys it was a great conversation thank you cool and that will be it for us i guess so if you want more information about the show it's eggshow.com uh you can find us on all the social media at eggs show and uh yeah catch this episode on itunes and anywhere good podcasts are found <laughs>